Hi folks. Well, um, a few people have asked for a bit more information on my Christmas present for myself, this Ultimaker 2. So I just thought I'd put together a little video and uh, show people what I've been up to on it. Um, now, I got this on Thursday last week, so I've had this six days so far, and I have to say I'm rather impressed. Um, it has not stopped since I got it. It's been running basically 24 by 7. Um, there seems to be no limit to the number of little plastic things I can print off. So um, let's have a look what I've been up to on it. don't know how these 3D printers work. It's got a nozzle that squirts out a very thin filament of the plastic and then it layers layer upon layer on top of each other until it builds up a shape. And we'll see what that one it's building at the moment is somewhere around about the end of this video. The first thing I did was try a few uh, pieces so I could repair the curtains in the spare room and I made some curtain hooks in this nifty curtain bracket with a gap so you can get the screwdriver in on it and that worked very well. And I knocked out a case for my Raspberry Pi that runs the network here in my house. And uh, that was just something I found on the Thingiverse, but it turned out looking really rather fine. Very happy with that. So one of the first things I wanted to make, or one of the first things I made, we uh, keep the rabbit food in this big container so the children can easily pour it into the bowl. And um, getting it out of a 25 kilo sack into there is something of a pain. So pretty much the first thing I made once I got the hang of it was this ginormous funnel, which happens to fit perfectly in there and means I can just pour the rabbit food in from a sack. But um, I was really rather impressed with the quality that it produced this fun lap. This was just a, a quick print, and say quick, it still took it about six, seven hours to make this, but it's um, superb. And you, and you really couldn't buy one like that if you wanted to. We've got a 63mm neck there and uh, 200 millimeters at the top end. Humongous funnel. So, I was very pleased with that. Having succeeded in that, I thought I'd make a little scoop for uh, getting the rabbit food out of the sack and into the funnel in the first place. And uh, again, really quite impressed with how tough that is. Really quite good. And I thought, hmm, I quite like that scoop. But, um, I'd like a better one for in the greenhouse for all the clay balls, all the growing media. So I built this one with thicker walls and slightly bigger size. And then, um, yeah, very pleased with them. Um, I turned my hand to some plumbing accessories, these hose repair jobs. This is one that doesn't work properly. This is where the bunnies have been at it. I'm just gonna. I can. It's my 3D printed hose repair. So I'm just gonna slice through that, shove in the uh, hose barb thing, and see how we get on. Hmm. Not quite perfect there. I think that might need a uh, reprint at a higher quality. We've got uh, loads of tiny little holes in there. So uh, that gives me other interesting irrigation ideas. Hmm. Um, I printed it on a low quality print and it's got microscopic pores through the plastic so that one leaks but I did a couple more on a high quality setting and they work perfectly. And um, I've also started making enclosures for things because uh, 
in the past I've built recycled battery packs just using um, OHP transparency film overhead projector film bits of cardboard and sticky tape but now I can make proper enclosures for everything and the next thing I plan on doing is making an enclosure for this timer module that will hold this module and a second relay alongside it and a socket so I can plug things in and um, I'll try and do strain relief for the cables and everything so I have to say I'm really rather impressed with all, all of this I was kind of late getting into the 3D printing world because having built my 3D woodworking machine in the past um, I discovered that actually the design phase took so long I might as well just hew raw blocks of wood by hand um, but the software has come on a huge way in the last 10 years since I built that machine and um, I'm really getting on great with it now so um, shall I do a quick look at the software? Yeah, no. Yeah, go on then. So to actually design these things I've been using Autodesk's 123D Design which is their free entrance starter set and this is a uh, hook I designed for the back of the bathroom door to replace a broken one which is uh, I would show you but I've already thrown it in the bin and the idea is this little wedge bit over here takes a nut in the back there and then a screw goes through and pulls the wedge in and that opens up the fingers on here which locks it into place in the door and here we have my door hook again and um, can change different views so this shows you the actual layers that the machine's planning on printing and uh, in order to print this I needed to add in some support material underneath it so you can add in a little scaffolding there we go so it's just built this little blue scaffolding underneath to support this part when it makes it So my door hook is finished, remove it from the build plate, and, uh, it's a bit kind of messed up round here due to it being unsupported but nothing that I can't fix with a bit of sandpaper. I'm going to give it a try, see if it works on the bathroom door. This was the original one that broke and it's uh, broken in two different ways, it used to have a little plug at the back that uh, came in and split that and I bodged that with a bit of polymorph several years ago and then the hook broke as well so uh, hopefully this should be a fitting replacement and it should be exactly the same dimensions as well so I measured it very carefully so here we have the finished article with the screw and the nut in I hadn't left quite enough space for the nut to go in so I've had to uh, just ease that in with the soldering iron to help it on its way. I'm going to go and give that a try and see if it uh, holds a towel. I think we can call that a success. And this is probably one of the things I'm most pleased with because you wouldn't be able to get that for love nor money. So this is the remote bar for my Nintendo Wii U and uh, it needs to sit on the top of the telly but the top of the telly isn't flat in any way in fact the top of the telly has exactly that profile so I made those two little clips and it just sits neatly on top there very pleased with that while I've got the camera rolling um, Constantin asked me he said he'd quite like to see the results of the uh, zinc copper battery experiment so this this was it um, I did this with my seven year old son a couple of days ago now and it is literally just a sheet of copper and a sheet of zinc stuck into citrus fruit you get about one volt we were getting about half a milliamp off each one so this whole string of fruit here was giving us about five volts at half a milliamp and I don't know if the camera is going to be able to see that yet I think it can there We've got our little LED still flashing away quite happily there. Let's move that 
make it easier to see. Do that, make it much easier to see. Now I'm just going to leave that running, well, probably until the fruit goes rotten. I might move it off my desk before then. There we are, and uh, we had a we had my bedside LCD alarm clock running off this for a few hours until my son played with the crocodile clips and disconnected it all. The county acorns are the best power. I find county acorns are the best power. Mhm. Mm Could they were a five, or you can do a direct kill. Um, very very simple. He, he asked for a day doing electronics and I thought we'd start on very first principles and generate some electrons as well. I've had a few questions over the last six seven months about what's been happening with my mixologist project and um, it still looks largely like it did in the video I made on this back in February time. Um, now there's a reason, I'll, I'll just show you kind of what's been changed since then. Um, Hopefully, we're going to all power up okay. There we go, so we've got these all ten screens up and working. Um, this one's one that I've replaced at some point, and this one's a lot brighter than the others now. I think two of these have had replacements, that's probably a replacement as well. But because um, these are just held together on a strip of paper, this is very touchy on bad connections. And this is actually one of the reasons why I wanted the 3D printer so I can print a decent surround out for holding all these displays so they're not going to be quite so twitchy. Um, it's actually taken me about five minutes to get this thing to power up properly this time. Um, the other small change I made on it is I've now got a load cell and a little load cell amplifier hooked onto it. Uh, if anyone wants to find out more about these, Ben Heck's Christmas present protection system that he just put up today is using exactly these same load cells and the little load cell amplifiers off eBay. So um, well worth a look if you want to find out more about how to use these things. Um, I also hooked in five buttons to it and if I press I think it's that one, this readout here and the top value up there which you probably can't see changes to be the value we're getting from the load cells A to D sensor and if I put a bit of pressure on there you'll see that value drops down there and if I put the pressure in the opposite direction, value goes up. And that tells us how much load we've actually got placed on this load cell. Oh, I see I've lost a screen there for some reason. Don't know what's happened to that one. Again, flaky connections everywhere. Needs a proper enclosure. And uh, I need to make a platform so I can have four of these load cells to weigh my nutrient bottles out. So um, there hasn't been much progress on that lately, but now that I've got the ability to easily make enclosures and surrounds. I'm hoping I'll actually get a bit more done on this in, in the next year. And there we go, we've made a small triangular plastic thing. Sorry, the lighting's terrible for this. Um, of no use whatsoever to anyone but um, kind of interesting thing. Well folks I hope you enjoyed that brief look at my new toy and how I've been getting on with other projects. I'm going to get on now and after I've edited this video together I'm going to build myself an enclosure for this timer and this can run my big yellow pump in the greenhouse and that means I can finally plant my overwintering onions. So it does all kind of make sense at least to me. There is method somewhere. Um, anyway, happy Christmas everyone and um, see you soon. Take care. Bye.